There we go. Well, thank you for that warm introduction. Um, my name is Shireen Bala, and I'm the director of diversity, inclusion, and diverse. Sorry, director of diversity, inclusion, and education at the Hindu American Foundation. Today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my work, which is promoting inclusive pedagogy when teaching about Hinduism. And this is kind of a complex subject, and it began about two years ago when we set out to employ a survey which was working at understanding Hin educator perspectives on Hinduism curriculum and district resources when we wanted to identify challenges faced by Hindu American students narrated from the educator lens and when we wanted to learn more about our teachers. So at this point I had been in this position about a year and a half and I had met some of the teachers through conference presentations, through um, classroom presentations, but there were also a huge amount of teachers that I had not met that had come to HAF and had learned about our resources through other means, whether it was my predecessor or through our website. And so I wanted to know more about who our teachers were and what were the challenges that they faced in the classroom and what were the challenges that they noticed students faced in the classroom and in the school. All with the goal of trying to create an educator's guide to Hinduism. And so we set out to create this guide to help teachers not just teach about Hinduism, but also to better address the needs of Hindu students um, while the students were going through K through 12 instruction. And so in November 2019 through about March 2020, we collected data. So we sent out an email. It was a very short email. It was like three sentences and it basically was, please take this survey. We sent it out specifically to our targeted teacher base. And this was twofold. One, to get teachers to participate, but also two, to see what the district and education attrition level was like for teachers. As some of you may know, teachers all across the um, country, the um, the attrition rate can be really, really high due to a ton of factors um, surrounding their experiences. So we only received about 63 teachers that responded back. They were from 24 states and there were only 12 questions. It was a mix of opened and closed ended questions. So some, you know, we had a lot of like multiple choice, some questions, some questions were um, fill in the blank and some questions just asked them for long or short responses to general um, questions that kind of invoked a discussion. I want to go ahead and say here we did offer an incentive um, by taking the survey. You were entered into um, a little, I guess, way to win $50 through Amazon um, gift card. And I want to say that because I think it's always important to let people know when there's an incentive involved with the survey. And so the survey findings were extremely, extremely interesting. Um, so out of the 63 teachers, well, you can see that they taught a variety of subjects, mostly in the ninth through 12th grade area. So if you see here, we've got um, some middle school teachers, some that specifically teach like 10th grade, for example, or 12th grade, and then some that say, hey, I work in a subject, ad or a subject area and I'm, you know, spending the day throughout the school juggling between 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th grade. And then we had a couple of teachers that um, taught in the university sector. We had one substitute one substitute that said she was in the K through six area and a couple that have really taught the gamut K through 12. And those likely came from our specials. So the first question, do you teach about Hinduism and or India? Um, only about 10% said not at all, whereas about 90% of our teachers here said they did teach about Hinduism. And they talked about Hinduism or taught about Hinduism in a variety of subjects. Probably most likely these ones um, were where a majority of our teachers came from. Ancient history, global history, AP world history, social studies, civics, modern American history, modern world history, world cultures, world religions, um, and social studies. So this was interesting. When we asked them, what were some of the topics you covered in Hinduism? And here we had a checklist. So we had a ton of topics up there and they could check through whichever ones they ta uh, taught. Um, almost 77% of them said that they taught about caste, whereas 23, almost 24% said that they didn't. Uh, and one of the interesting comments was, I teach about caste a little bit, but I find it too complicated to teach. 
topic, so also covered in addition to caste, really circulated between him, um, dharma, like I guess more granular concepts like moksha, dharma, karma, all the way up to bigger and you know more, um, more I guess larger areas like the days, festivals, symbols, history, ancient India. And this was very, very interesting because when we were looking at the data, we noticed that there were 44 teachers that referenced they taught about ancient India, 23 references of modern India, and zero mentions of contemporary India. And you might say to yourself, well, what's the difference between modern India and contemporary India? Well, two things. One, there's a lot of contextual framing regarding modern India as opposed to contemporary India, because modern India really relates to the present time or the recent past, whereas with contemporary India, we're looking at what's happening now or beginning now. And the second reason why I say this is very interesting is because this is this survey was pre-ethnic studies. So during this time, it's important to note that California was in kind of involved in this whole process of deciding if they were going to take on ethnic studies as a curriculum mandate for their K through 12 schools. And it had been, you know, a little bit of a mess because they had a, the state of California had a proposed um, curriculum that there were a lot of, there was a lot of pushback about the content, including from organizations like ourselves that felt it wasn't inclusive nor really um, accurate as well as people that felt that certain groups were not represented or misrepresented within the um, curriculum. So at this point, ethnic studies and this idea of talking about religions and ethnic groups in a contemporary framing was starting to develop. So I'm interested to know if we employ this survey again in the next couple of years, where would that data be in terms of talking about contemporary religions and contemporary parts of the, the world. But coming back to this survey, I want to come back and say that, you know, when I read this and when I was looking at the data, this was extremely interesting to me because when we talk about India and we talk about Hinduism within the framing of ancient India, we're then hindering students from seeing it as being a lived religion. So it doesn't become something that they have familiarity with or something that they believe is a progressive or a um, current religion. And when you add that to the fact that 26% of our teachers told us that they didn't have Indian students in their classroom or potentially in their schools, then we're kind of developing this idea that othering is happening. Um, due to the limited or no engagement with Hindu students. I also want to point out here, I've got an interesting stat, this 30%. So recently I did a series of classroom presentations for um, a very small school district in kind of Northeast Pennsylvania. And so we did five presentations of Hinduism 101 to um, six and eighth graders. And we had asked them to submit their questions ahead of time. And 30% of this, the questions that came in were specific to practice and restrictions, all within this idea of rules and regulations. And so coming back to my point about ancient India, when you're conflating ancient religions um, with, without explaining how they've moved or progressed into current times, you're then contributing to that language that they are restrictive religions or um, contextualized within this idea of it being an old practice and you're not at all bringing it up to current date. Another question we asked um, teachers, which was, what issues do you notice Hindu students face at school? And 27 of the 63 teachers said, well, these Hindu students are in an environment with limited knowledge about Hinduism. And you know, I'm, I grouped these together in categories, but the comments here, which I'll show you in some of them, all really indicated that this limited knowledge from other students, the district, potentially other teachers, led to a lot of misinformation, misrepresentation, and just some specific incidences where the Hindu students felt alone and or felt challenged by the environment that they were in. 
17 of these teachers said that they actually had no Hindu students at all. And this ran the gamut from no Hindu students in my classroom to no Hindu students in my school to I've never had a Hindu student or I don't know any Hindu families or students. 16 of our teachers said, I don't know of any issues that they, they face, I'm, I'm not privy to them. And 3% said, okay, the, there were specific issues and there were really three areas. One was pressure from home. Second was no mental health um, initiatives for minority children. And the third was my students get worried that they're going to miss school and they're gonna get behind. And so these three issues that they specifically noticed um, only really dealt with like academics. And that in itself is an interesting point to, to digress. And so, like I said, some of the comments that we saw regarding this idea of um, lim these Hindu students being in environments with limited knowledge and or no real support, they, um, they were kind of some of them are narrated here. So we have a large South Asian student population at our school, um, though other students do not always understand their religion. So he, in that comment, we're seeing that even though when students, Hindu students are placed in schools with other South Asian students or Indian students, they're not necessarily in an environment that other students outside of that circle may know enough about Hinduism. Peers not understanding their culture. I'm at a multicultural school, but I don't have any students who are Hindu. So, um, but I did see a fair amount of student bullying surrounding racial backgrounds and beliefs. Um, other students often ask them about what caste they were in. Um, it's difficult for students to be the representative of the faith and expected to learn or is expected to answer all questions other students have about Hinduism while these same students are learning about their own faith. And then I know some students do face bullying because of their ethnic origins. However, I am in a very culturally diverse school and find that most of the students are kind and accepting. So here we're just, again, seeing a lot of trends about, um, you know, other students not understanding and a lot of misinformation. So then we kind of wanted to come back to some positive notes here. And so one of the questions towards the end of the survey was, okay, so these are the challenges you've identified about teaching Hinduism. These are kind of the challenges you've identified about the Hindu student experience. How can you, or how can we help you? What would you find to be helpful in teaching about Hinduism? And really almost everybody said, um, well, we need more materials. And you know, we went back into the granular, okay, well, what kind of materials? And so videos, toolkits, um, lesson plans, PowerPoints, reading primers. And so here we're seeing just a bunch of different responses is that multimedia tools would really be appreciated in the classroom. So our general findings about the um, study were that a lack of understanding about Hinduism is a direct correlation to misconceptions about religious practices, and this eventually led to classroom and cyberbullying. Um, that their teachers felt that they had an inadequate time allotted to them to talk about um, important subjects, and this led to hurried instruction. Um, on these really, really specific issues like social issues, idol worshiping concepts. So these kinds of things that already there's a lot of misinformation about. And even though they're being, you know, being um, teachers are being given better instructional materials to talk about them, it's still not enough time in the classroom to talk about them. And teachers also expressed a concern that they were not equipped with enough support to teach about Hinduism in a way that they felt that was effective. So what does this have to do with Hindu phobia? Well, as you can probably guess, there are some correlations prior to um, the Hindu phobia conference and prior to coming into this space, our idea was, well, how can we better equip teachers and how can we better help students? And so with my findings, I'd like to to kind of hone in on these three points um, from the definitions. So with Hindu phobia, we know that these acts extend from microaggressions all the way up to genocide. So I'm gonna focus a bit more on the microaggressions today. Um, and that we know that um, with this type of rhetoric, we're seeing this sort of rigid, oppressive and regressive traditions. And again, coming back to my point about ancient India being the framing and the predominant framing when talking about um, Hinduism. And that, um, you know, 
these social issues such as caste misogyny, they end up being a huge part of t talking and teaching about Hinduism. And so then this becomes intrinsically bound up with Hinduism for um, people that are learning about Hinduism. And I want to say that with education, you know, especially the K through 12 sector, I think this is where a lot of the transmission is coming through, um, through the curriculum and the teaching resources. So when I take that definition and I see, okay, well, how can we better prepare our students? Well, the number one thing is I don't think there's enough materials out there that help students recognize what those microaggressions look like. And then that makes students unprepared to identify and respond to statements about Hinduism. Um, and teachers are very well-meaning, but they could be potentially employing bias about Hindu um, Hinduism through their educational lens. And so then this becomes a triangulation of what this needed. With the educator's guide, we set out to help teachers teach about Hindu, teach about Hinduism and to help better um, work with their Hindu students and help identify challenges. We want the Hindu student experience to be part of the curriculum material so that the students can see themselves in the, in, in the religion being taught. But we realized that the third part of this triangulation is this other one is how can we better prevent Hindu phobia through this educator's guide? And so kind of moving into this segment, I want to talk a little bit about what the implications from the study are and how can we better um, implement them into our resources. So this has been making the rounds online and I unfortunately couldn't find the original source to attribute this to. So if anybody knows that, I've got my email address at the end and I'd love it if you could share it with me. But we started to notice that online there was this really interesting idea about racism shields. And racism shields are sentences and ways of framing yourself, like prefacing what you're about to say, um, to deflect from internalized racist ideas. And so these shields are often said to derail uncomfortable conversations um, that are a necessary part of understanding and undoing bias. So you might hear this, I can't be racist, I voted for Obama twice. I can't be racist. I'm in an interracial marriage. I can't be racist. You know, there are black people in my family or I've been discriminated against too. So racism shields are not just I'm not a racist. It's preventing people from looking beyond how they present themselves to maybe understand, okay, am I thinking I'm not potentially a racist because I have, you know, an interracial marriage or I have um, interracial children or I'm in a position where I have a lot of knowledge. And so how could I be racist? Well, we kind of wanted to take that further and say, okay, so here we're, we're seeing that Hindu phobia is on the rise. What could Hindu phobic shields be or Hindu phobia shields be? So in alignment with the Hindu phobia glossary that Hindu American Foundation has also come out with, we wanted to highlight racism shields that some may be using to prevent examining their own biased opinions about Hindus and Hinduism. And we want to do this within the classroom framework. So these are talking points, um, and sometimes they're specifically crafted to, uh, to gaslight and dismiss Hindu Americans. Sometimes Sometimes they could be extremely well intended, um, you know, statements are coming from well intended people, but they're labeling all of the concerns related to a political identity and tying it up with Hinduism. And so what do they potentially sound and look like? Oh, I'm not Hindu phobic. I'm Indian raised as a Hindu. I'm not Hindu phobic. This isn't about Hinduism, but you're making it about Hinduism, whatever topic that might be of discussion. Um, I just care about diversity. I'm anti-racist. I've studied Hinduism at school or the university. And we know that this statement in particular can be very triggering. I can't be Hindu phobic. I'm a scholar of South Asian studies. And so we're in the process of working through this. So I guess I should have maybe stated that this idea that we're working through racism shields and how to better prepare students for recognizing um, racist shields from other students, from classmates, from um, the community, from their teachers, from district leaders, from university educators. We're still in 
the beginning stages of defining how to better prepare these students. But one of the potential examples we've come up with is, I'm not Hindu phobic, I've studied Hinduism at school. So we're not just wanting students to hear the statements, we're wanting our Hindu students to be able to, to understand how that still could be potentially biased. And so they might hear from a teacher, I'm not Hindu phobic, I've studied Hinduism at school. And I want to just point something out really quick here that a lot of ninth through 12th grade classroom teachers in order to teach about history geography even sometimes um, different social studies they have to have an additional certification and it's very common now to find a high school teacher that has an advanced degree of a you know master's ma or you know in in that subject area in south asian studies or in um, history. So, you know, when a student hears, I'm not Hindu phobic, you know, I've studied Hinduism at school, I want students to be able to hear that and kind of dissect that and realize that a lot of the textbooks out there, K through 12 materials, they perpetuate racist colonial area stereotypes about Hinduism, and they fail to present um, to students a complete and relevant picture of the place of scripture within Hinduism as well as Hindu beliefs. So I don't want them to just hear from a teacher, well, I'm not Hindu phobic, I've studied Hinduism. I want them to be able to kind of get in there and critically think about what that statement could mean and to maybe identify where that um, where that's coming from. And so the work doesn't just stop, right? So, you know, when I set out to do this study, like I said, it was to just better help teachers teach about Hinduism. But now I realize I want to include a, an area in there, whether it's in the Ed Guide or an accompaniment that, that goes along with the Ed Guide, that helps teachers potentially recognize their own Hindu phobic statements, even if they're well meaning. So, this is something that is going to be in progress for a while, even when it's done, printed, published on the website, I don't think it'll be 100% done. I think it'll be an evolving document. Because again, coming back to my point, Hinduism, Hindu phobia, it's an evolving thing. And so we don't want to just frame it in ancient India and say, well, it's Hindu phobic if you say something about Hinduism 5,000 years ago. <laughs> we want to hear and students be able to recognize um, Hindu phobic statements that are currently ongoing. And so that means that we all need to do the work. We all need to identify what potentially are internalized biases and where maybe our Hindu phobic statements could be coming from. We want to work with teachers to dismantle to dismantle Hindu phobic shields. And we want to help students understand what they may be hearing and what may be implied. Because when they move beyond that K through 12 setting and they go to the college, the university, those academic spaces, that's where they're going to continue hearing it. Well, that's the end of my presentation. I've put um, my email here if you have any questions or have any feedback. Like I said, this is in early stages. Please don't hesitate um, to reach out and let me know. I'm always open to learning and to getting to know my colleagues better. So thank you. For the latest on our YouTube channel, click subscribe and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. Remember to like, comment, and share our videos. For more about HSC, you can visit the social media handles listed below.